Morning folks, Andy Truck Davy and the truck. Hair's getting a bit long. Hey, where he goes. Coming to you this morning from a lay-by on a very busy, very busy A90. Just past the Ellen Cutoff. Um, it's 10 degrees. It's a beautiful morning. So, here we go. We'll start with the coronavirus update. Um, these figures are for the 3rd of the 5th, 2020. And then we'll move on to talk about some of the issues that came up over the weekend, okay? Some of the news stories that come up over the weekend. Um, okay, the coronavirus update. Tested 60,295, of which 12,097 tested positive. Um... Active cases, that's those in hospital, um, on a ward, they're in a, an IC unit, and or, and those uh, recovering at home is 3,242, and the deaths for the daily total now stands at 1,571. I would imagine that by Wednesday, when the National Records for Scotland give their figures, it will probably be bordering on the 3,000 mark because these are just the hospital deaths deaths in the community and that as we know for last week it took us up to 2,600 odds so I imagine we'll be passing the 3,000 mark this Wednesday right anyway um, so the number of deaths is probably off a lot higher than what, what the daily total was ok Right, Matt Han right, let's move on to Matt Hancock and the trumpeting that they had passed the 100,000 test mark. But by the end of the day on Friday, that was the first. That's when the announcement was made. The deadline for meeting that target was the 30th of April. Anyway, they claimed they'd tested 1, uh, 122,000 odd people. Turns out, that they'd actually only tested 73,000 and they'd counted in the numbers um, tests that had been sent out now it also came to light that uh, in order to get these numbers up Matt Hancock had, he had say, in the Conservative Party HQ had sent out emails to Conservative Party members and asked them to apply for tests now, these homes test, and then there was, of course, the, the, there was a, to make the numbers up, they sent out over 40,000 test kits. 40,000 odd test kits, they say. It was revealed that these test kits were sent out when they returned addresses, and when people phoned the call centres to find out whether it was send the, the test kits back to, they were told to throw them in the bin. That led to people asking, where did these test kits come from? Well, we know through reports uh, earlier in the week and the end, tail end of last week that they had sourced 250,000 home test kits from China. So the UK government and Public Health England had uh, sourced 250,000 home test kits from China, but they didn't work. That could explain why there was no return address sent out with these um, test kits, and it could explain why people were being told just to throw the test kits in the bin. So in usual Tory fashion, they set themselves a target they couldn't meet, and then they lied about it. Now, Nicola Sturgeon on tests was different. She set herself a target of getting, a, getting to a capacity of 3,500 per day, and could successfully announce that they had reached that capacity. Know that amount of tests. That wasn't what Nicola Sturgeon was saying. Nicola Sturgeon was saying she would have the capacity to do that amount of tests. Never said she needed to do that amount of tests. Unlike the idiot Hancock, who said he would do that amount of tests per day. If he did just have said we would have the capacity to do that amount of tests, he wouldn't end up with so much egg in his face, and he wouldn't have to stood in front of the, the UK public and lie through his teeth again. 
like he did with the PPE issues, like he did with everything else. The man is government. The man, the Westminster government, are criminally negligent and have to take responsibility for a lot of these deaths. There won't be any. They, they're saying they're not going to hold a public inquiry, so they'll be nobody held to account for all these unnecessary deaths, which is galling, absolutely galling. Anyway, moving on. The UK um, joins... Well, the UK seeks to join the EU Health Cooperation. Um, a initiative and the light of this virus. This is the initiative that they initially refused to join on political grounds, claiming they were out it. Right? Now, on Saturday, The Independent reported that a um, healthcare workers were forced to turn to food banks when they were off. These are the people that come into the hooses and look after your, your granny at home so she can stay home and not have to get into a care home. Now, that's the problem when you outs outsource healthcare. When you outsource healthcare to private companies, they take on staff in zero-hour contracts. And these staff in zero-hour contracts are not entitled to any pay when they're off. Not even sick pay. So, the Independent was reporting that health healthcare workers in England, and I dare say in Scotland as well, who are on these zero years contracts, are turning into food banks to survive while they're on lockdown because they don't have any wages coming in. Absolutely shocking situation. Now, when this is all over, health and social care has to be brought back into um, public hands. Um, retirement homes and care homes should be returned into the hands of the local authorities and nursing homes and palliative care should be in the hands of the NHS. Now a lot of these care home businesses are going to go out of business anyway at the end of this. So it would be possible for the local authorities and central government to buy up these establishments quite cheap. And then we can get them staffed properly, trained properly, and we can have our elderly people look tested properly within their own communities. Where I grew up in Easterhouse, it's not there anymore, but it was a big old folks home across from the swimming pool and the shopping centre. It was right in the heart of the community. So if your granny needed to get into an old folks home, she went into that big one in the community and everybody who was a friend and family had everybody with uh, friends and families with access to it we need to get back to that we need to get back to care homes retirement homes nursing home uh, uh, being in local authority hands nursing homes and palliative care homes being in the hands of the nhs this can't be allowed to happen again Also on Saturday, um, the Guardian reports that the NHS workers don't want medals, they don't want flybys, they want proper a PPE, personal protective equipment, and apparently it's still a big issue in England. Up to 20% of the private care homes and a fair chunk of the NHS are still struggling to get PPE, proper PPE. It's a shocking and damning indictment of public health in England and the Westminster government. Okay, also on Saturday, YouGov released a poll showing um, that the First Minister of Scotland um, is handling of the coronavirus -y epidemic is she as a she's polling very well, let's put it that way, compared to Boris Johnson. Right across the UK, 70% of UK residents believe that a Nicola Sturgeon, the first minister of Scotland, is handling the coronavirus situation the best in the UK. And here in Scotland, 
The same poll showed that three quarters or 75% of people um, approved of how Nicola Sturgeon's handling this epidemic. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, polling. UK wide, they believe that a, she's the best at handling this. 70% of the UK population that was polled believes that. And 75% of the people in Scotland believe it as well. Now, the polling for Boris Johnson wasn't quite so good. Only 40... 37% of people thought he was doing well. 54% um, thought he wasn't doing well. And the rest thought... Uh, the rest were don't knows. And the other polling information that came out at the weekend, um, for the Westminster uh, polling intentions, Scots intend to vote for the SNP, 51% of Scots intend to, uh, to vote for the SNP. And for the Holyrood elections next year, 54% of Scots intend to vote for the SNP. So at this point in time, the SNP are polling really well. But the elections are a year away. Let's not go overconfident, folks. Because the state will do something to drag that down. Because they can't live with that. Um, it's also announced at the weekend that the UK is to start trade talks with America this week. And a UK banks are dusting off the no deal plans in light of what is around the EU talks. So it looks like no deal with the EU and the backup plan is a crap deal with America. Simple as that. E That's going to cause a lot of problems. Mass unemployment is going to be just one of them. Um, and of course there's a, the fact that America is no just in the corner the way the EU is. It's not a quick hop across and a quick uh, ferry to get across to America. You know, it's 3,000 miles away. And if that's who your biggest trading partner's going to be with, then the economy's in trouble. Big still. And, of course, at the weekend, Bojo announces that he wants to open the schools in England back up on the 1st of June. The First Ministers of Scotland and Wales come out and made it clear that they'll decide when the schools reopen in Scotland and Wales, no Westminster. Don't know how Bojo's going to take that, but I'm sure there'll be a backlash. Um, in fact, I'm positive there's going to be a backlash. Hey, it was also reported at the weekend that mortality rates um, in Scots hospitals is half that of the mortality, uh, mortality rates and English hospitals. Okay, so the mortality rate from COVID-19 in English hospitals start, sits at 33% and in Scottish hospitals it's just it's 18%. That's no surprise. Infection control in Scottish hospitals is 100% better than what it is in England. And a Public Health England, when they did their inspections of hospitals last year, failed, failed, Wins, Windsor, a hospital, some of them even condemned, said they weren't fit to be in. Um, but as far as I'm aware, Public Health Scotland hasn't condemned or downgraded the services at any hospital in Scotland. We also know that because the SNP have been in slapped about by the opposition parties on own hospitals and hospital infections that the Scotland's hospital infection rate was was sorted out. You know, after they carry on with the the new Southern General. So infection control is much stricter and much better here in Scotland. So it doesn't supply us uh, surprises that the mortality rate and Scottish hospitals it's half that of the mortality rate in English hospitals when it comes to COVID-19. Right. Scottish Islands are not happy. 
because Westminster seem to be using him as a laboratory for he's in the lockdown. They're not happy at all. And while they're thinking about opening up the islands to, to your traffic, it's just been reported that over the weekend, a large care home in Skye has had 20 days, had 52 um, cases of COVID-19. I think it was 28 residents. No, 56 it was, I think. 28 residents and 26 staff members, so... 25, 50, uh, 1, and 5, 56. So 56, see. Uh, and they want to open the islands up. People flock there. Communities that are fragile, elderly, um, will succumb. The best thing to do is to keep the islands uh, to essential traffic only at this point in time. Oh aye, scientists in England are going to fly, scientists in England have to set up a, a, a mirror group to SAGE to offer the UK government advice because it would appear that SAGE isn't he, just isn't cutting the mustard. But as I say, it's for a data mining a companies, a da data mining people and a is a bit like public health experts. So in England, they're going to set up something like that. About what like Nicola Sturgeon did. She had a look at the information we received and went, this isn't working for us. So Nicola Sturgeon set up her own scientific advisory group and now there's one getting put together in England because the, uh, the scientists in England don't think Sage are up to it. So they're going to set up their own 12 panel group and they're going to supply information to the Westminster government. Let's hope that helps. Uh, what else we got? Um, not a lot. That's really all the subjects I wanted to talk about today. Um, obviously, I'm a bit distressed about the increased amount of traffic on the roads. Um, and the... Uh, the other big thing at the weekend that I did want to talk about, you know, just it's that big issue I didn't need to write it down, so it's a Boris Johnson's route map to get out of lockdown. It'll be announced next week, but people have already seen um, the BBC announced that they had seen a copy of it. And the uh, his idea is that he uh, in places where social distancing is no possible then social distancing rules won't apply. Um, but PPE could be used instead. That's that PPE they can't get enough of for hospitals and care homes. But they expect business owners to open up, get the economy going, supply their employees with PPE. That, the, that means that they wouldn't have to social distance. The other, th other ideas is a near hot desk and and the staggered shifts so that public transport doesn't get too busy. Um, the details no there in, in, in great numbers. Um, there's no much detail to it, but apparently we're going to put more meat on the bones as the week goes by, and then the announcement should will be made by Boris Johnson next Sunday. Hey, this is where we could get divergence in Wales and in Scotland because the Welsh First Minister and the Scottish First Minister don't think we're at the point where we should be opening back up again. And if we are opening back up again, initially it should be sectors that uh, can work safely. So, and it should be done sector by sector so that we can watch the effect in each sector as they open up. But that's not how Boris and the Tories are there. Um, the 1922 callers, I've already explained this, they're breathing down their necks. Um, they want the economy back up and running. And as the other power behind the Conservative Party, they get what they want. Although these are also the people that are making money out of the pandemic. They own shares in big uh, pharmaceutical companies and things like that. But they're not making enough. They want the whole market opened up again. Because they've got their fingers in every pie. And they want to sauce every goose. 
if you like. So, that's a big story. That uh, Boris Johnson wants to get the economy fired back up again. Um, there's a meeting on the 7th to decide what the next steps are. I would like personally to see this lockdown extended for another three weeks. Um, I'd like to see it extended to at least the beginning of June. Gives a chance to flatten this curve. The death rate's still too high. Infection rate, although it's at one, it needs to be less than one. Um, this is the thing they're calling the R number, the R rate. Um, it needs to be a bit lower than one. As I say, I don't think the First Minister's very happy um, with what's going on in Westminster, and I expect she might take a different course of action. Right, well, that's it. Break's over. Time to join the traffic here on a busy A90. Not as busy as where it should be. It, normally, it would normally be pre-lockdown, um, but busier than where it would have been a couple of weeks ago. As I say, so that's it. Andy Truck Davy and the truck coming to you today from a lay-by on the A90, just a bit, just after the Ellen Cutoff, um, where it's a lovely morning, 11 degrees. Have a nice day, and I'll speak to you all tomorrow.